Brewster here, new episode of Brewster's Millions of Rants, and this is the Stranger Things guitar workout. And I recently binged season four of Stranger Things, which I think most people out there watching probably did too. Very popular show. And uh, I just, you know, I'm absorbed with that intro music, you know, the main theme from Stranger Things. I think everybody's addicted to that. It has that really dreamy 80s Vangelis and Tangerine Dream, Jan Hammer, you know, kind of synth thing happening. Super cool. While I was watching season four, I was sitting there with my guitar, you know, unplugged on the couch, and I was just running, you know, exercises and scales and stuff, and I heard that theme, you know, and I've been watching, you know, every season, but for whatever reason, I just sat there and started playing along with that theme music, and then I got lost in this workout that I developed, and I wanted to share that with viewers out here. So if you're a Stranger Things fan and also a fan of arpeggios, then this lesson's going to blow you away. So here we go. So with that intro jam, I was really just playing around with the Stranger Things, you know, arpeggio and the chord progression, and then I just started improvising and played a solo. So none of that was scripted or worked out. I literally just hit record and played. And the first thing we're going to break down basically is that arpeggio figure, which that's, you know, basically the main thing that you hear in the Stranger Things theme. There's also an underlying chord progression and some sneaky things in there, but it really is just that C major 7 arpeggio right there. And we're going to break that down, we're going to find some you know, fingering mutations, we're going to move it around the fretboard. We're also going to move that through the circle of fifths. So if you've been working with the circle of fifths or trying to understand keys, then this lesson is going to blow your doors open. When you hear that arpeggio figure like this... <laughs> major seven there's c e g b and c and then you're just looping that up and down it's got that really smooth legato kind of flow and then you distinctly hear a chord progression and i'm hearing g over i'm sorry c over g right here and then you hear this transition chord you know a d over a to an e over b right here and then that arpeggio is just played over top of that. Right. And you also hear this kind of thump like heartbeat. And that's kind of what I was doing right there with that chord progression. And that's really just an E and a C, an E and a D, and an E and an E right there with that chord progression. the arpeggio itself, like I said, it's C major 7, so over that C over G, then it's going to sound like C major 7, but then when it transitions up to that E over B, you know, that's basically an E minor implied, and that's going to function basically as an E minor flat 6 over that E. Alright, next step, once you have that arpeggio under your fingers and you have that flowing, legato, kind of smooth sound like this. Real even and smooth. And then it's kind of slow, but you want to play that with total control and smooth and accurate and even. You don't want to rush or slow down or anything like that. That really flowing, smooth sound. So we had C, E, G, B, C, right, for that arpeggio. And we can find like four other variations of that exact same thing. Here's the starting one. Well, let's do another fingering variation like this. And that's going to strengthen that stretch and using your pinky right there. Because the first, you know, version, we had a hammer-on on the second and third note. 
and then a hammer on pull off on that uh, fourth and fifth note. And then for this variation, we're doing a hammer on right off the bat, and then a single G, and then a hammer on pull off on the top. So it has a little different feel or flow to it. start on the C on the low E right here. And we're doing the exact same thing. There's your C, there's your E, there's your G. Reach up and grab that B, and then you're going to come over here and grab the C right there on the G string. So the same arpeggio. But played in the range in a totally different way. start on that same C and this is going to mimic the uh, fingering pattern we have here. We're going to do it right here off the low E string. Like that, the same thing. But in a different position right there. And the last variation is right here. through all of those arpeggio shapes and that flowing you know melodic figure um, you're working on different you know uh, fret hand challenges right there because you're stretching you're using your pinky or maybe other fingers a little bit more and you should notice you're actually using all of your fret hand fingers when you run through that <laughs> you know between different string groups and fingering patterns and stretching and stuff you know, it's a great workout once you have that main melodic arpeggio figure under your belt then we're gonna start moving it to other keys and I you know basically started cycling through the circle of fifths and uh, basically here's a chart to help you understand what that is if you're not really you know familiar with the circle of fifths it's very common definitely use some music theory and it's basically just kind of a visual image to help you understand you know the layout of keys and the order of sharps and flats and stuff like that. But here's the circle of fifths. So we're just going to walk through this, but we're going to start with C major in the same place right here. Now let's do each of these arpeggios four times. So there's C major seven four times in a row. We're going to move to G. That's the fifth of C. But I'm not going to go to that G down, or I'm sorry, that G up here. We're going to go to a G down here. So we're going to go from C major here to G major 7 right here. Right? Same fingering, just a different set of strings. We're starting on the low E instead of the A string. pitch is D, so we're moving in the circle of fifths, now D major 7. Next up is A, A major 7. Next up is E right there, so E major 7. think of that as D flat major 7 because up next is A flat major 7 right there so now we're hitting some of the flat keys and then E flat major 7 right there and then B flat major 7 right here C major 
major seven. So we've gone full circle through the circle of fifths and now we're back at C major seven. <laughs> because you're not only learning the circle of uh, fifths and kind of moving around the fretboard, but you're also using that same arpeggio figure and really challenging your fret hand and playing it all over the neck, which is great. Here's that entire exercise played in a moderate tempo. <laughs> that's going to wrap this episode and let's look at the Stranger Things guitar workout and like I mentioned earlier I was watching the show and I kind of hit some of this stuff with the theme music and that arpeggio and then I had the idea and I thought hey I think I'm going to make a lesson based around this and start you know fleshing out some of these you know ideas using the Stranger Things theme and learning theme songs from TV shows and movies and video games and stuff is something I've done since I was a kid like a teenager you know sitting on the couch with the guitar in my hands TV on in front of me you know, and learning the theme from the Flintstones or, you know, Star Wars and Mario Brothers or whatever. I mean, I've always loved this, you know, learning music from other instruments and bringing it to the guitar or learning popular theme songs and stuff, you know, RoboCop or whatever. Here we're looking at Stranger Things. You can do this with anything, but it really does kind of sharpen your ear, you know, kind of ear training. You're learning these parts, listening to what's happening and trying to mimic it on the guitar. And it also is a big, you know, technique challenge. Obviously these arpeggios and those fingering movements and stuff are great, you know, exercise and workout for building strength. And it's fun. You know, you play some of this stuff with somebody and they recognize it and they're like, hey, that's Mario Brothers. So that's Jaws or Star Wars or the Monsters or whatever. And it's cool. Of course, here at Stranger Things, but you can do this with any theme song, any movie, TV show, video game, a commercial on the radio or whatever. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content material. Thank you.